So we finally heard from SpaceX, which means that Flight 9 is pretty dang official. SpaceX just shared about an hour ago, as of the recording of this video on Friday, May 23rd, that they are targeting just a few days from now, no earlier than May 27th, Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Central Time. Their live coverage will begin about 30 minutes before liftoff, and Joe Tegmeyer and I will be streaming as well. So do me a favor and just pull up our stream, mute it if you want in a separate tab, but that would be really great to see you guys. But let's talk about some new information that they released. After completing the investigation into the loss of Starship on its eighth flight test, several hardware changes have been made to increase reliability. And they give us the full technical summary of the mishap investigation, which I know that you guys are yearning to learn more about. So let's rewind back to March 6th, 2025 on Starship's eighth flight test. Starship successfully lifted off at 5.30 p.m. Central Time from Starbase. All 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy booster started up successfully and completed a full duration burn during ascent. After powering down all but three center engines on Super Heavy, Starship ignited all six of its Raptor engines to separate in a hot staging maneuver and continue its ascent to space. The Super Heavy booster then relit 11 of 13 planned Raptor engines and performed a boost back burn to return itself to the launch site. Once there, it relit 12 of the planned 13 engines for its landing burn, including one of the engines that did not start up for the boost back burn. The three center engines continued running to maneuver the booster to the launch and catch tower arms, resulting in the third successful catch of a super heavy booster. And here we go. The most probable cause for engines not relighting during the boost back and landing burn phases was traced to torch ignition issues on the individual engines caused by thermal conditions local to the igniter. Post-flight testing was able to replicate the issue and engines on future flights will have additional insulation as mitigation. They go on to say Starship's upper stage flew along its expected trajectory following separation from the super heavy booster. About five and a half minutes into its ascent burn, a flash was observed in the aft section of the vehicle near one of the center Raptor sea level engines, followed by an energetic event that resulted in the loss of the engine. Immediately after, the remaining two center Raptor engines and one of the Raptor vacuum engines shut down and vehicle control authority was lost. Telemetry from the vehicle was last received approximately nine and a half minutes into the flight or a little more than two minutes following the first flash observation, at which point all engines had shut down. Contact with Starship was lost prior to triggering any destruct rules for its autonomous flight safety system, which was fully healthy when communication was lost. It is expected that the autonomous flight safety system fired upon loss of communication, ensuring vehicle breakup following the mishap. The vehicle was observed to re-enter the atmosphere and break apart following the loss of communication. And so here we talk about the most probable root cause for the loss of Starship, which was identified as a hardware failure in one of the upper stages center Raptor engines that resulted in inadvertent propellant mixing and ignition. Extensive ground testing has taken place since the flight test to better understand the failure, including more than 100 long duration Raptor firings at SpaceX's McGregor test facility. To address the issue on upcoming flights, engines on Starship's upper stage will receive additional preload on key joints, a new nitrogen purge system and improvements to the propellant drain system. Future upgrades to Starship will introduce the Raptor 3 engine, which will include additional reliability improvements to address the failure mechanism. While the failure manifested at a similar point in the flight timeline as Starship's seventh flight test, it's worth noting that the failures are distinctly different. The mitigations put in place after Starship's seventh flight test to address harmonic resonance and flammability of the ship's attic section worked as designed prior to the failure on Flight 8. So that is really great news and something that we've been waiting to hear now for over two months. So let's go back to talking about Flight 9 and what you need to know for your planning purposes. By the way, I love how transparent SpaceX is. But you guys, Flight 9 is really important. SpaceX writes, the upcoming flight test marks the first launch of a flight-proven super heavy booster, which previously launched and returned on Starship's seventh flight test. In addition to the reuse milestone, Super Heavy will fly a variety of experiments 
aimed at generating data to improve performance and reliability on future boosters. The Starship upper stage will repeat its suborbital trajectory and target objectives not reached on the previous two flights, including the first payload deployment from Starship and multiple re-entry experiments geared toward returning the vehicle to the launch site for catch. To achieve this first ever reflight, extensive inspections took place following the booster's first launch to assess hardware health and identify where maintenance or replacement hardware was needed. Known single-use components like ablative heat shielding were replaced, but a large majority of the booster's hardware will be flight-proven, including 29 of its 33 Raptor engines. Lessons learned from the first booster refurbishment and subsequent performance in flight will enable faster turnarounds of future reflights as progress is made towards vehicles requiring no hands-on maintenance between launches. The booster on this flight test is also attempting several flight experiments to gather real-world performance data on future flight profiles in off-nominal scenarios. To maximize the safety of launch infrastructure at Starbase, the Super Heavy booster will attempt these experiments while on a trajectory to an offshore landing point in the Gulf of America and will not return to the launch site for catch. Which, based on the last video, you guys are going to kill me for saying that, at least half of you. But listen, that's in SpaceX's press release. Following stage separation, the booster will flip in a controlled direction before initiating its boost back burn. This will be achieved by blocking several of the vents on the vehicle's hot stage adapter, causing the thrust from Starship's engines to push the booster in a known direction. Previous booster flips went in a randomized direction based on a directional push from small differences in thrust from Starship's upper stage engines at ignition. Flipping in a known direction will require less propellant to be held in reserve, enabling the use of more propellant during ascent to enable additional payload mass to orbit. After the conclusion of the boost back burn, the booster will attempt to fly at a higher angle of attack during its descent. By increasing the amount of atmospheric drag on the vehicle, a higher angle of attack can result in a lower descent speed, which in turn requires less propellant for the initial landing burn. Getting real-world data on how the booster is able to control its flight at this higher angle of attack will contribute to improved performance on future vehicles, including the next generation of Super Heavy. And finally, unique engine configurations will be demonstrated during the Super Heavy landing burn. One of the three center engines used for the final phase of landing will be intentionally disabled to gather data on the ability for a backup engine from the middle ring to complete a landing burn. The booster will then transition to only two center engines for the end of the landing burn, with shutdown occurring while still above the Gulf of America and the vehicle expected to make a hard splashdown. Starship Upper Stage will again target multiple in-space objectives, including the deployment of eight Starlink simulators, similar in size to next-generation Starlink satellites. The Starlink simulators will be on the same suborbital trajectory as Starship and are expected to demise upon entry. A relight of a single Raptor engine while in space is also planned. The flight test also includes several experiments focused on enabling Starship's upper stage to return to the launch site. A significant number of tiles have been removed from Starship to stress test vulnerable areas across the vehicle during re-entry. Multiple metallic tile options, including one with active cooling, will test alternative materials for protecting Starship during re-entry. On the sides of the vehicle, functional catch fittings are installed and will test the fitting's thermal and structural performance. The entire ship's tile line also received a smoothed and tapered edge to address hot spots observed during re-entry on Starship's sixth flight test. Starship's re-entry profile is designed to intentionally stress the structural limits of the upper stage's rear flaps while at the point of maximum entry dynamic pressure. Wow, that was a mouthful. So yeah, there you have it. There is the latest breaking information from SpaceX, and I'm going to end this recording so that I can share this video and edit it. So thank you so much, you guys. I plan on being down there, and I hope that you're able to check out my coverage, share this video, and thanks again.